he never knew how real this all was, right? And when you say that, you think that you're somehow or another going to make them believe you now because you've said something profound. Like, if you knew how real this was, the way we chase these rabbits to find the answers for ourselves and we say that we're trying to wake up other people and we care about them, which we do, but really what you begin to understand is another corny realization that it's not like I'm trying to wake them up, I'm trying to wake myself up because they are me or some other poetic bullshit that you don't quite understand, but since people who are awake repeat it, you repeat it. We want you to change certain ways about yourself. We try to make you confident in certain things that you can't change. But we also trick you because we give you the idea that you can change certain things. That there's no way it can be good, right? And you notice you can't change them. You maybe can shift the weight around, but you've noticed you then start acting different in one way if you fix the other way. You're trying to stop your temper problem, but now it's just eating you away inside. So you're better with people, but overall it's killing you. There's some things it's as if you just can't get rid of. Why would they tell me to fix this? Right. Maybe we don't want you to fix the problem, because it's not a problem. Maybe we want you to fix the idea that you need to fix it. What did you say about the um, the booze and drinking? You said your friends never knew. And that was true, because they, they made comment to that effect. They said, your friends, no one ever knew when you were high or on drugs or drinking. But they definitely knew when you were sober. Because you, you, you were always upset, you were always in a bad mood. But people would take note of the effect, like, wait, didn't you take an ecstasy pill with us at the rock concerts? And, you know, did you smoke weed with us? Because you don't look high at all. But they knew when you weren't high, man. They knew when you weren't high, because you were low. But this is so fucking real for you. And like you told my kids that night, man, you hit it right on target when you realized, oh shit, that's funny. I'm giving you advice I need to be giving to myself. That was a great talk and a great walk that night. Too bad you didn't record that conversation. Because you started talking to yourself. Even if you are hallucinating all of this, even if you are making all this up in your head, first of all, you were saying this a while ago, now you have outside people saying essentially the same thing. So right there, you have somewhat of a witness. Maybe not a reliable one, maybe you, you can't put it on the stand. But I don't care who comes up to you and tells you you're crazy. You were saying this. Are you still believing that because the fact of the matter is their news feed on Facebook or the conversations at the lunch table and what's going on in their head has in fact shifted towards what you were saying. And you know that's true. And you know it. Don't let them try to devalue your evidence. Don't let them try to devalue you as a witness to yourself. And I'm not trying to be, again, all poetic and profound. I'm just saying... No one else is going to stand up for you and be like, hey, I'm a witness. I saw Don do that. I know that's what you're expecting. But you, yourself, are the witness. Why not do it for yourself then? Are you wrong in what you were saying? So what does it matter? You're the one that presents the evidence. It doesn't mean the evidence isn't true. Uh, we know what you know. We know what you know. That if someone on the outside comes in, it somehow gives you an extra bonus witness. In their head, it's psychological. Someone else presented it. Maybe we'll have a sexy female lawyer come in. And say, look, and here's what Mr. Lentz provided as proof. And somehow the jury will be more convinced. And you'd be right. You'd be right. You'd be absolutely right. And that's why. <laughs> that's why you're the main lawyer. That's why you're their witness. I give them the best defense they can possibly have. And you do an excellent job at another thing. Because you realize they burned you, Don. They burned you a lot on the physical side. But you know, you're, when it comes down to it, on that final day, and they're terrified, man, that you're finally going to fucking, you know, metaphorically sit up in that witness chair and be like, well, I'll tell you the, what, the one time they stole my phone, they took my money, they did this, they didn't call me back, and I was in pain. And you know you're never going to say that. You would never do that, bro. Even if you were angry, you would never, ever, you perjure yourself to save people. And they don't know that. Yet. Right. Yet. Exactly. <laughs> All surreal, isn't it? All surreal. Surreal. Indeed. You are about to enter a very strange world. 
world of alleged spooks and spies, of conspiracies and covert operations, of illicit transmissions across the globe to secret agents on undercover operations. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down and read passages. He glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. And to the Lord of Allah, and to the Lord of Allah.